bunker play. Awesome thing to practice. Concepts of bunker play are identical to the fundamentals of what we're learning chipping. Bunker play, you need to have a good rhythm to the shot. You don't try to hit it. You're not trying to get distance. You're trying to get the ball up high and soft and onto the green. The average bunkers play on tour, it took place from 10 yards. So I practiced it from 10 yards, trying to get every shot inside that three foot circle. How far behind the ball should I hit? At what angle should I hit into the sand? It doesn't matter. What matters is that you continue the motion through the shot. You then will find the right spot to get the ball out. So we break our wrists early, just like the hinge and hold. And look at my hands. Look how high up into the finish they are. That's what's important in bunker play. The most critical element to bunker play is to continue your hands into the finish. Just like putting, just like chipping. We cannot stop our hands. We need to keep the leading edge and the bounce consistent as long as possible, just like out of the grass, just like chipping. The bounce on the club will kick the leading edge up into the ball if we stop our hands and let the club keep going. We have to keep our hands and club traveling together at the same speed so we keep the leading edge and the bounce as consistent, as similar as possible for the longest period of time. My hands accelerate all the way up into the finish. Look where they are. They're not down here at impact. This did not count too, by the way. You have to accelerate everything up into the finish. Developing this basic rhythm, this basic motion, is the most critical element to being a good bunker player. You have to continue your hands into the finish. We're keeping our ball position the same off of the front foot. We're trying to get the ball high and soft, so what do we do? We open the face and then adjust our body. Just like when we open our face from off the green using the hinge and hole method, exactly the same. On a good lie, our weight and position will be fairly level, maybe slightly forward, and the ball will pop right on out as long as we keep our hands moving into the finish. When we have an uphill lie, so what we have to do, we have to set our weight back. We have to shallow out the bottom of the arc. This allows the ball to pop up nicely. We're not doing anything different in our setup. The ball position is the same. We're setting it up the same on uphill lies, the same on basic shots. When we get to a downhill lie, we have to get our weight forward to be able to drive the club underneath the ball. This is where we move the ball fractionally forward in our stance, opening the face just like the lob shot, and we drive the club right behind the ball, popping it up high and soft. Very lie, very difficult shot to control. We're obviously not going to spin the ball out of this lie. Our hope is to get it up and control somewhat where it rolls out. It's going to have zero spin. This ball is plugged on an uphill lie. I cannot finish high, drive it just behind the ball. I have to keep leading with my hands. I want to stick it into the ground as such. The arm and the club stay in a straight line, driving it right behind the ball. I'm opening the face. My weight is forward because we're trying to keep the club underneath the ball. So my weight is forward. I'm leaning into the hill. I drive it in. And if you notice, the ball popped up. But look, my arm and club are still in a straight line. My hands continued, but it just stuck into the ground. It stayed ahead of the club. I didn't stop my hands and let the club pass. we have a downhill lie. We have our weight forward and we are not going to finish real high. We're going to stick it into the ground with my hand staying ahead of the club. 
So the weight is really forward, ball is forward, and I'm driving it straight down into the ground. I'm actually not hitting it that hard. I'm not gonna take this full swing because the ball's gonna come out with no spin, so I have to play for that. So I'm just gonna take a little shorter backswing actually on this downhill lie and let the ball pop up. And then it runs out. The long bunker shot is not that hard. 60 degree wedge, the ball position is the same, the swing is the same, the hinge and hold method accelerating our hands to the finish. It's the exact same for a long bunker shot. This is as far as I hit my 60 degree wedge out of the sand. If I have a longer shot, you have to hit closer to the ball and take less sand. That's crazy. I wanted to use the same exact bunker shot using a little less loft taking a little more club. I'll drop down to a sand wedge. Everything is the same. The ball position is the same. The swing with the hinge and hold accelerating into the finish will be the same. And the ball goes farther. Pitching wedge, sometimes even a nine iron, hit explosion shots out of the sand upwards of 40, 50 yards. Same everything. Ball position is the same. I always keep the club face slightly open so we have a little bit of bounce. So our goal is to get it inside the three foot circle obviously, but if not there, each foot is critical. Here's a trick shot that you can hit easily and your buddies won't know what in the world you just did. We're going to put two balls together and we want to have a lip in the bunker because when we strike this first ball as hard as we can, this second ball is going to race into the lip and hopefully stay in the sand so your buddies don't see it. This ball that we strike is going to shoot really high up in the air, hit the green, and back up 100 feet. That's how we can practice without having to retrieve balls.